Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a pediatric cataract. Let us observe this surgery. This is the main incision on the posterior aspect of the limbus. You can see oozing of blood from the lips of the wound. This is a side port on the right side of the main incision and this is another side port on the left side of the main incision. Now I inject an air bubble. Beneath this air bubble tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule. It changes the elasticity of the anterior capsule and rexis becomes a little easier. So tripan blue dye helps in two ways in pediatric cataracts by giving more contrast and by changing the elasticity of the anterior capsule. Now 2% SPMC has been injected into the anterior chamber. You can use other viscoelastic substance. I have used 2% SPMC. The anti-capsule is incised and now a uh, utrita forceps is used. The anterior leap of the main wound is kept, kept lifted up and this is a play of balance. How much to pull and how much to let it go to periphery. So when you want it to come to center, you give a centripetal force. Whenever you want to go to periphery, just give a little outside force and the rexis is completed. The rexis is little larger but it is good because in pediatric cataracts the tendency of the capsule to contract is much more than in adult people. So in pediatric cataracts it is always better to do a large rexis. This 6 millimeter axis will probably come down to about 5 millimeter in about 6 months. And now hydro dissection has been done. And now I am going to aspirate this lens mass using high vacuum and a little ultrasonic energy. The vacuum is 450. This is Catrex 3 of Oatley, Switzerland. Whenever necessary, a very minimal ultrasonic energy is applied going to foot position 3. And thus the lens mass is managed. Most of the uh, lens material has come out except some cortex in the superior aspect. This is SPMC again and now I am using this 23 gauze Simco to remove the rest of the cortex. Yes, it is done. And now the most tricky part of this surgery. A posterior continuous curvilinear capsular axis P C C C is to be done because the patient is very young about five years and the patient will not cooperate on the ER laser machine. So I take the cystitome again, make a puncture at the center, take the uterita forceps, hold this capsular tag and do a small PCCC posterior continuous curvilinear capsular X P triple C and this has been a very nice posterior CCC size of this CCC is about 3.5 or 4 millimeter now I'm going to use a B cartridge so I enlarged the main wound and I'm going to uh, load 
a sensor multipiece intraocular lens. This is the lens. I go from behind, keep the edges of the optic over the cantilevers in the cartridge, behind the cart cantilevers and now the lens is to be implanted in the capsular bag. In such cases the tip of the cartridge must go inside the anterior chamber. So wound assisted delivery is not suggested and that's why the main wound has to be enlarged. Now here it is. The tip of the cartridge goes into the anterior chamber. The cartridge is turned clockwise and as the haptic comes out, care is taken and under direct visualization, the haptic is placed between the anterior capsular rim and the posterior capsule. And as the optic comes out, the cartridge is rotated anticlockwise so that the lens doesn't suddenly tumble. Now here, I want to keep this lens in this position. I don't want to want the lens to behave in an abnormal way. So I took the Sinsky, used it from the right sideboard and supported the optic and now I'm trying to place the trailing haptic into the bag, into the space between the anterior capsular rim and posterior capsule. The leading haptic has gone into the capsular bag and now here it is. I take a Sinsky hook with my left hand, lift the rexis edge with in the second attempt the haptic went into the space between the posterior capsule and the anterior rim. Now the lens is nicely centered in the capsular bag. And now after removing the visco from the anterior chamber I have gone behind the eye well and uh, removing some anterior vitreous. This is very much necessary because if the anterior vitreous phase is intact, the antivitreous will act as a scaffold and lot of cells will grow over the anterior vitreous phase. So a gap is created, a space is created so that no cell can grow behind the central part of the optic. We know that in pediatric cataracts, the posterior capsular opacification occurs even in two weeks. And now, after injecting an air bubble, tri uh, triamcinolone acetate has been used to check if there is any vitreous strand. Uh, it was not there. This is a irrigating probe or bimanual IA. And as we use the irrigation aspiration, we can make out that there is no vitreous strand in the anterior chamber. And now the left sideboard and the main wound is being, first the left sideboard is being sutured. This is a two on on knot and the knot is buried in the corneal tissue. And now I take a Simco to a final lavage of the anterior chamber, form the anterior chamber nicely. The air bubble is removed. The anterior chamber is formed very nicely and the main wound is sealed but it is closed by suture. No chance 
has been left no chance of leaking has been left in this case and the knot is buried in the scleral tissue the right side port is small and nicely sealed it didn't require any suture now after instilling few drops of moxifloxacin the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills